Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So a couple people actually requested this topic a while ago, and I am finally getting around to it. So today we will be talking about the hyper-pop star Aisha, her rise to success, and her sudden disappearance from music. This was kind of a hard one because it was one of those topics where all the information just isn't like in easily readable, digestible articles, but instead you've got to do a lot of combing through social media profiles and read a lot of forum posts. But I kind of like these ones sometimes because it makes the information feel a little bit more organic because I'm getting it from people who are actually there and witness it and are talking about it. So let's go ahead and get into it. Hyperpop is a musical subgenre of pop that originated in the UK in the mid 2010s. Its sound is characterized by its avant-garde, maximalist production, and almost cacophonous sound. It takes a lot of influences from electronic music, dance, and house, and other genres like hip-hop. Hyperpop sounds artificial due to the use of autotune, distortion of vocals, and other sound effects, and it's a genre that plays with the power of technology and music making. It often sounds like you're inside of some fast-paced video game or other cyber world. Hyperpop combines several elements of sound in a way that might seem haphazard to the uninitiated, which is why it's often referred to, both jokingly and seriously, as pots and pans music. It's also common for hyperpop artists to make both musical and lyrical references to the tabloid sleaze era of the early 2000s and other Y2K references in general. People like Britney Spears, Lindsay Lohan, and Paris Hilton are commonly mentioned. Hyperpop is popular within the LGBTQ community, which several of Hyperpop's most prominent figures are part of themselves. Popular Hyperpop artists include 100 Gex, A.G. Cook, Sophie, That Kid, Slater, Dorian Electra, Charlie XCX, and Namasenda. So now that you're a little bit more familiar with Hyperpop, next we're going to get into Aisha's rise to fame, her short-lived career, and then her disappearance from music. And if today's topic inspires you to solve a mystery of your own, boy do I have the game for you. I'm so excited to chat with you guys today about June's Journey. June's Journey is a hidden object mystery game set in the 1920s where you, aka Detective June Parker, are tasked with the mystery of solving the murder of your sister and your brother-in-law. This captivating game takes you way back to a time before there was the internet or Google, which is how I solve my mysteries and get my information from my videos. But instead of combing through forums and social media profiles, you are situated in the glamour of the 1920s, and instead you're searching for things like newspapers and black and white photos and gramophones. This is pre-Grammys days, of course. Y'all know me, and y'all know I love to be in people's business and investigate, and June and her family definitely have something going on that needs investigating. Aside from the murder, of course, but nothing is what it seems. My favorite time to play June's Journey is at night when I'm in bed relaxing because it's the perfect way to decompress. I get to take a break from the hustle and bustle of modern life and instead I get to do things like search through a mansion, hack into a safe, or investigate a hidden speakeasy. I've also started playing June's Journey in the morning when I wake up, you know, just to get my brain going. The game is so immersive thanks to all the colorful sets and the characters and their vintage costumes and all the sort of vintage old-timey objects you get to search for. You also get to customize your own mansion and island, which, you know, a girl can dream, or she can play June's Journey. Now is definitely the time to download June's Journey because for the third time, they're participating in the Green Game Jam. From May 25th to June 7th, there are three limited time events that you can play as part of June's Journey's Wildlife Week. By completing these events, you can collect animals from the Himalayan ecosystem, including the Himalayan black bear, the snow leopard, and the monel. But this has a positive impact in the real world also. If we as a community collect enough animals to reach our milestone, Wooga, the game developers of June's Journey, will donate $100,000 to an organization that supports the Himalayan ecosystem. Laptop Naomi here. I just wanted to come on and do a live round of my current level of June's Journey with you guys. Currently, I am on a yacht, so let's go. Don't make fun of me. I know it's like so silent, but I cannot talk and do this at the same time. I'm so nervous. Uh... This, I usually don't do this well. I'm going so, oh, period. Okay. And I found a man. I got a clue. He's a clue. So if you're ready to solve a mystery with the backdrop of the 1920s and help the environment, there is no better time to download June's Journey. It's available on Android and iOS mobile devices, as well as on PC through Facebook games. And June's Journey is free to download, so go ahead and click the link in the description of this video, that way you can start playing. Happy, happy hunting, and thanks so much to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video. As is the case with a lot of artists today, several hyperpop artists got their start self-producing music and then posting it online. The same was the case for Aisha. 
Little is known about her career before music because she's been intentionally private, but she was born in California in 1996. In 2015, she began posting music on SoundCloud and helped write and produce Miss Prada's debut album, Queen of Pop. Those of you who might be unfamiliar with Miss Prada might know her better as Joanne the Scammer. Aisha primarily produced the album from her phone and some of her vocals made the final cut on Queen of Pop. The following year in 2016, Aisha put out two mixtapes, Queen of Pop Exposed and Sick at Home. She also released her first album, Big Juicy. The eight track project contained several high energy songs with 16 being a fan favorite. Aisha put out her second album, Barely Legal, as well as another EP soon after. Her third album was scrapped for unknown reasons. Already, Aisha was gaining a large and loyal online following. In 2017, she released two more EPs, one of them being the popular www.fme.com. Aisha's song, Literal Legend, was the one that really helped her career take off, especially online. It became a TikTok sensation with over 44,000 videos using the sound. While researching, I found viral TikToks that are just days old that are still using Literal Legend. I can hear like one thing. Literal Legend is a bombastic hyperpop song that makes use of repetition, a track skipping effect, and even incorporates New Jack Swing and Miami bass. The song references stars like Rihanna, Paris Hilton, Bjork, Courtney Love, and Janet Jackson. Her song Nasty also became extremely popular on TikTok, and a lot of people were impressed with the song and admitted that they didn't even know that it actually was a song and not just a TikTok sound. I can't show any TikToks with this sound because the sound that is commonly used does have a mashup with sexy back, so I'll get copyrighted, but it's the sound that's like, I beat that boy with a bat smack, damn sorry I blew you off, I was having lunch with Microsoft, that one, I'm sure you've heard it. Another of Aisha's songs, Vacation Bible School, was also used in over 25,000 TikToks. This one has the more upbeat, glittery, auto-tuned, synth-heavy sound that many associate with hyperpop, partly because Aisha produced a lot of those songs. So it's likely that even if you've never heard of Aisha, you've at least heard a little bit of her music. A lot of it is raunchy and lewd, which is relatively common in hyperpop. But Aisha herself was primarily known for singing songs about sex and sexual liberation. Aisha's growing recognition in the hyperpop community allowed her to collaborate with other big names. Aside from her own music, she continued writing and producing for other artists and featured on some of their tracks. Several of her collaborators have called her a musical genius and one of the most talented people they knew. Aisha worked often with her friend Slater, including on Slater's debut mixtape. Slater said about working with Aisha, I started making music in high school, but it was so bad. It wasn't until last month. I hit up Aisha, she's a producer and she's so good. I was like, do you want to make a song? And then she sent me the beat to BFF. I've been making music for a while, but that's all deleted now. BFF was originally Aisha's song, but she gave it to Slater and they developed it further. Aside from BFF, Aisha also produced the songs Alone and Candy on Slater's mixtape. Aisha also worked with That Kid, producing his first single, Doll Tone, which is back on Spotify, so make sure you stream. Aside from producing, Aisha helped write Dial Tone and sings the opening verse and pre-chorus. Slater also features on Dial Tone. Aisha and That Kid also featured together on Kunchi's song, Regina George. When That Kid eventually released Crush, his first mixtape, he thanked Aisha for helping him a lot with the production. However, most of the producing credits on Crush went to an artist called Miss Cheeseburger, leading people to believe it was another alias of Aisha's. Miss Cheeseburger has also produced songs for Slater, which lends more credence to this theory. Though she was plenty busy working with others, Aisha was planning on finally putting out her third album as well. Initially, she teased it on Instagram, alongside some MySpace bonus tracks, sort of like a deluxe edition. Later, when she confirmed the album, Aisha said there would be a standard 8-track version as well as a 14-track extra dirty version. The album was slated for release in December of 2018 and would be her final project, yet it was never released. Two of the songs, Alone and Hello Kitty, were given to Slater, and the song Taco Bell was given to that kid. Vacation Bible School, which I mentioned earlier, of course was released and it was planned to have been the lead single for the album. Several of the remaining songs were sold to other artists. In November of 2018, an internet user called Void for Angel created a master post containing several of Aisha's unknown social media accounts, those of her friends, her full name, and apparently her address in an attempt to dox her. Doxing, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is the process of searching for and publishing private or identifying information about a particular individual on the internet, typically with malicious intent. 
Doxing is often done for revenge or as a form of vigilante justice when an individual commits a crime or other social infraction. Void for Angel posted Aisha's information to a site called Doxbin where people would share information about others in order to dox them. It's said that Void was a fan of Aisha but was generally disliked within the fandom for various reasons and it's unclear what exactly his goal was in attempting to dox Aisha. Aisha mistakenly thought she was doxxed by an artist by the name of Quinn Fatale, who was one of her clients, and she doxxed him and his entire family back in retaliation. In response, Quinn leaked more of Aisha's music online, including demos she'd made for other artists. This resulted in Aisha canceling her album and announcing her retirement from music. She said in a post, Hey, I'm not releasing any further music at all under Aisha. I'm not a public figure and I don't want to be an internet celebrity. I don't really want to make friends anymore. Thank you if you support me, but please respect my boundaries and stop sending me messages or anything negative about Slater or any other bullshit I didn't sign up for. If you support me and you see people being weirdos and hacking dumbass songs I made on a MacBook, please just report and let's move on. There's a lot of music in the world. Also, using my name and picture is weird. I'm not famous, I'm literally a shut-in and I have five friends including my mother. Stop. Thank you to everyone for supporting this manic ass endeavor. And for the people I actually speak to, feel free to message me anytime and I'll get back to you. Sorry I let this shit scare me away from my friends and living life. I have a ton of features still coming out and those are fun, but that's it. Please just support the shit that's officially out and leave it at that. Since Aisha's sudden retirement came the month before her album's release, it was scrapped. Several of her fans lamented her departure from music, especially in the way that it happened. A lot of them took to social media to pin her retirement on those who took Aisha's persona as an excuse to not treat her like a human being. It's just another case of fans assuming the content of an artist's music gives them license to disrespect their boundaries. Whenever Aisha's music leaked, several of her own fans were the ones circulating it, with some claiming fans were even trying to sell it online. Fans and non-fans alike impersonated her online, while it was said others found out where she worked and showed up to her job. In addition, several of Aisha's fans continuously accused Slater of stealing Aisha's music and aesthetic, something Aisha has never said or implied. Despite Aisha listing out her reasons, there were several other rumors circulating about why she was leaving music, like her parents found out about her music and was shutting it down. It was clear a lot of people didn't want to believe that she was truly leaving. In December of 2018, Aisha posted a story saying she would be revealing new music, but the new music never came. The following year in 2019, Aisha featured on tracks with artists including Cole and Petey Plastic. These were the features she'd mentioned she'd already recorded. That same summer, pictures of Aisha, that kid, and Petey Plastic were seen on Twitter. Fans speculated Aisha was teasing again she might be returning to music, which she shut down quickly. On Instagram, she said, No one is coming back at all. I met two friends and they asked for pictures. I'm not releasing any new music and I'm not returning to anything. This, if anything, makes me want to come back 100% less. Please respect my boundaries, and for the 100,000th time, please stop using pictures of me. At the end of 2019, another leaked song of Aisha surfaced online. In it, she was accused of using a slur over five times. That kid took to Twitter to defend Aisha, stating it wasn't her singing, but someone trying to pass off the song as hers. That kid also said this same person was impersonating Aisha and passing off pictures of themselves as her. In August of 2020, it seems like Aisha was doxxed again. This time, her dead name and some pre-transition pictures were posted online. It was unclear who doxxed Aisha, and some on Twitter claimed it was Charlie XCX fans who did it because they felt Aisha was copying Charlie or stealing her music. I'm going to be honest and say I'm not completely sure as to whether this doxing situation was separate from the first, but it appears to be since the Void for Angel dox was referred to as a failed attempt on several sites. Apparently, the doxing got so bad that artists who worked with Aisha were harassed as well, to the point where some of them also left music. Fans also noticed Aisha's music kept getting added and taken down from Spotify. It's unclear whether this was Aisha uploading and deleting the music herself, or whether other people were uploading the music and Aisha or Spotify was removing it. Aisha still has a cult following of fans eagerly awaiting her return to music and creating conspiracies about when she'll return. Her presence is still felt in the music of a lot of hyperpop artists, often because she produced it or influenced these artists through their friendships or working relationship. Aisha is often credited with infusing the Y2K influence into hyperpop and with popularizing it through her music and her work with others. Just browsing through Reddit threads and other music forums shows that Aisha's fans have several different theories about what happened to her and even alternative versions and timelines for bits of the story that have been confirmed. 
So unless Aisha ever speaks up and clears up the story or gives an alternative version to the explanation she already gave, both of which seem doubtful, people will just be stuck trying to put the pieces together. An article I read for this video stated Aisha's lack of online presence, outside of her music of course, likely contributed to her massive following and the near idolization by her fans. Because pretty much nothing was known about her other than her sexually charged, larger than life music, it was easy to almost think of her as a character or archetype rather than a person, actually pretty similar to the way several people treated Y2K celebrities and even some celebrities today. The article did say that despite this, it's important that Aisha's fans still hold her accountable for her actions like doxing Quinn rather than overlook them. Some of Aisha's music is still available online, though a lot of it isn't on Spotify. She only has two songs on her own Spotify account, which were just added last month, though neither are new releases. A lot of Aisha's music is available on SoundCloud though, as her fans have re-uploaded it against her wishes. She doesn't have any other public social media, and her fans really haven't heard from her since 2019. It's likely that if Aisha does return to music, it'll be under a different alias. It's also possible that she'll remain more behind the scenes as a producer and a songwriter rather than as a recording artist. It has been said, but not confirmed, that she's already working as a ghostwriter and producer. Aisha's rise to fame was relatively quick, though in her short time she was able to make an undeniable impact in the hyperpop space, which made her quick disappearance all the more alarming. I think in a bigger aspect, this case speaks to how hard it is to be an online figure and maintain boundaries with your fans. Because your fans, aka the same people who say that they love and respect you, will be the same people who feel the need to uncover all of your private information, one because they're just genuinely curious and want to know more and don't care about your boundaries, or because they feel like this gained knowledge will sort of increase their standing within the fandom. And then not only do they find the information, they'll often post it and let everyone else know that they found it without really thinking about how this can affect someone's safety and just how invasive and how unsettling it is in general. If people want personal information out there, they'll communicate that to their audience. And then aside from fans, there are people who weren't fans of Aisha who disliked her and felt like it was their mission to dox her because people feel like it's okay if they think that that person deserves it or if they need to answer for something in a sense. And then even now, like I saw people posting this year and last year trying to figure out where she is, what she's doing, what her new alias is, if she's still making music. So you're just completely missing the point of why she left in the first place. I think a lot of people forget that just because they're a fan of someone that doesn't give you an excuse or a reason to bypass their boundaries. Also, I don't want anything that I'm saying to come off as me defending Aisha for doxing Quinn because I think doxing in general is just a bad move. So I'm not on her side with that either. This topic also opens the debate as to whether it's ethical to repost an artist's work after they've taken it down. A lot of people say it's disrespectful to do once the artist has not only taken it down, but expressed that they don't want to be associated with that artwork anymore. Other people say that it's fair game because once you post something to the internet, you can't really control what people do with it. So either way, be sure to let me know what you think. And before I go, I do want to remind you again to click the link in the description of this video. That way you can download June's Journey for free and get playing. I know tonight after I finish editing, that is definitely what I will be doing to just relax. As always, thank you so very much for watching the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you can stick around for more. Make sure you follow me on Twitter if you want to keep up with me there. And if you would like to become a channel member, the link is in the video's description. As always, love you all so much. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.